This is the story of the American dream, told by a man who's lived it, those who fear for it, and three women on a journey to rediscover it. Previously on I Am Forever. It was a great day and it was a great lesson, I think, in life in general about sticking through with our goals. I'm a military spouse and he's the hero in our family. And just to have their mom do something fantastic. Awesome. Maybe they all won't understand it now, but looking in the future, they'll be able to say, mom was pretty cool too. America was great. All I had to do was work and I would get paid for it. I would ride my bike up the mountain to work at the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. Dishwasher, busboy, laundry, finally, waiter. I had my own business by my senior year, building houses. Hard work in America gave me that opportunity. I learned to love America. to my cuticles this morning because they're black, wilderness <laughs> dirt. I'm afraid. I haven't washed my hands in three days. <laughs> so gross. My mess. <laughs> it's totally organized. What are you talking about? Day three, things are getting a little bit unorganized. Got a big trash bag. Yeah, three days. That's a lot of time to be out here. <laughs> Okay guys, so what we're gonna teach you guys next is how to make a poncho raft, which will enable you to get yourself and all your equipment safely across a water obstacle in case you ever need to. So all you're gonna need is your poncho, and we're gonna go ahead and spread this thing out. And put your pack right in the center. And then you're gonna take each end of your poncho, and then you're gonna just roll it down nice and tight. And then you're gonna make what's called a gooseneck. Take your paracord and just cinch it down. Is that good enough? Good. And then you're gonna take these two pieces and you're gonna tie a square knot. Good. All right, good job. Right on. All right. Let's go to the swim. Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. She's cruising. <laughs> She's doing so good. Good job, Pat. Keep it up. <laughs> well, let's check out the bag and see if our poncho wrap really worked. Okay. And let's if it. it's dry. dry. Okay. All right. This is your stuff. I know. It better be dry. <laughs> I volunteered my bag here. Oh my gosh, it's so wet. <laughs> it's perfectly dry. It's perfectly, perfectly dry. dry. Woo! Good job. Good job. Woohoo! Dry pack. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. Sweet. So, just like we did with a pistol, we're going to do a rifle inventory exam. We're going to start off with the grouping exercise, same thing we did with the pistol, and we're going to move back to 10. So we want to see 10 rounds in the center of that bullseye target. Okay, okay, as close together as we can get them. No time limit. All right. And then we're going to move back and shoot our triple bullseye drill again, but we're going to do that from 25 yards. Okay. Same time limits. Stand by. 10 rounds, 50 seconds. 10 rounds, 40 seconds. 10 rounds, 30 seconds.
Okay, so for the steel portion of the inventory exam with the rifle, you're going to shoot at 40 yards from the offhand, five rounds, 15 seconds. Do your best to keep all five of those rounds in the center rectangle, okay? Then we're gonna go back to 70 yards, five rounds from the offhand in a time limit of 20 seconds. And then we're gonna go back to the 100 yard line, 10 rounds, 50 seconds prone. Overall, with the rifle, fantastic, but we're gonna improve how we're gonna progress with the steel, though. We're gonna start shrinking the time down <laughs> on you a little bit faster, a little bit faster. All right. We'll work on that. We'll get you some more points out of that, too. Well, I think, you know, part of being sort of a wealthy society is that you want to give everything to your kids. I see a lot of the hovering and the helicopter parenting um, where I live, and I, I think that creates a generation of kids who are nervous, who are unwilling to take risks, expect to be cared for for longer. I think this generation of children might not recognize an opportunity if one comes around. We're increasingly raising a generation of risk-averse people. I have friends who are in academia, uh, college professors, actually college professors on both the left and the right, who are astounded and aghast when they have these students make sort of unrealistic demands on schoolwork or to be expected to uh, be put into classes that they may not have earned. It's not so much that they expect a reward, it's that they expect uh, special treatment. They expect to have their demands met no matter what those demands are. In these backcountry situations, a lot of times your best route is cross country. You kind of got to figure out you know, which ridge here and there you're going to take. In these situations, you have to use certain hiking techniques to do it properly to keep the heart rate down. On this situation here, we're going to use a method called the rest step. So the, the goal is when you're going uphill and you use this in any like vertical climb like this, you know, this is a perfect scenario. So your goal is when you're, you know, stepping up the hill here, you're taking a very slight pause and just a slight little, you don't have to, you know, stop in the air, just a slight little pause. Remember, heels on the ground and it's super vertical like this, use your duck feet and just keep that same pace. It seems slow, but when the hill's that big, that's what you have to do. If you try to just do this, you're gonna last 30, 40, 50 yards. Your heart's gonna be pumping like crazy, and it's not gonna, you're not gonna work. So slow, consistent, just a slight little pause. And like I said, it doesn't feel natural, but our goal is to pick a pace and not stop. So you can kind of see the top there. I want you guys to be able to make it. Hey guys, is the pace okay for you? Are we going too slow? Perfect. I was hunting bighorn sheep in Nevada. My guides and I, we were going to Valley of Fire. There's a reason why it's called Valley of Fire. It looks like it's on fire. It is so beautiful. A place that we should all see. We turned off on an off ramp onto a road where we passed a very small grocery store we went inside to buy water and sandwiches. The young girl behind the counter in her 20s asked me where we were going. I said, to the Valley of Fire. And she said, you know, I was born here. I grew up here. I've heard many stories about the Valley of Fire. I've never been to it. Someday I'd like to go there and see what it's like. I've heard so much about it. Less than 20 miles away was the Valley of Fire from where she worked. Yet she had never been. I think about that and I am amazed. Why? Why would people come from around the world to see this magnificent miracle of the desert? And she lived less than 20 miles 
I always wanted to see it. And up to that time, never did. I will never understand that kind of thinking. How sad. Some people have life, and yet they never live. started our journey this morning, you two were kind of looking up at the mountain, a little big eyed. <laughs> like, whoa, we're going up there. Yeah, a mile and a half straight up is not exactly what I wanted to hear this morning, especially after our excursion yesterday. This is a nice reward though, it's beautiful. This is wild America. And with so many urban environments and so many cities, and there's not a lot of people that get to experience this. This is a true blessing. As we were walking, I was also just thinking about um, my family, and I was thinking about um, wanting to bring them back to experience this, because this is really something special. And you do feel grounded, and you feel, um, you feel the space, you feel the grandeur of America. And we did it without stopping. Yeah, we, we did. did. <laughs> we're unstoppable. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Great day. Great day. As soon as the sun sets, the women will face their stiffest challenge yet, solo navigation to their campsite under the stars, with only their map, compass, and training to rely upon. Next time on I Am Forever. <laughs>